Buenos días. Buenos días. Buenos días. ¿Cómo estás? ¿Cómo estás? ¿Cómo están? Mi answer es muy bien. Gracias. Muy bien. Gracias. ¿Y usted? ¿Y usted? Yo estoy muy bien. Gracias. Arthur, ¿cómo estás? Ya se fue. Bueno, ¿qué día es hoy? ¿Qué día es hoy? Mi answer es hoy es. Hoy es. Lunes, martes, miércoles, jueves. Jueves. Hoy es jueves. Hoy es jueves. Let's practice all the sentences that we have learned. ¿Qué día fue ayer? ¿Qué día fue ayer? Ayer. And the answer is, ayer fue. Ayer fue. Miércoles. Miércoles. ¿Qué día es hoy? ¿Qué día es hoy? And the answer is, hoy es jueves. jueves. Mm -hmm. Muy bien. ¿Qué día será mañana? ¿Qué día será mañana? And the answer is, mañana, mañana será, será viernes. 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 Muy bien. ¿Cómo está afuera? ¿Qué tiempo hace afuera? Those are two ways of asking about outside. Mira, afuera. Está lloviendo. Está lloviendo. Está lloviendo. Uh -huh. Por aquí. Muy bien. ¿Qué clase tenemos hoy? I feel like we're going to have to phase that question out because we keep having the same answer. Hoy no tenemos clases. Estamos aquí en video. Nada más. Bueno, vamos a contar hoy. Vamos a practicar los números. Um, yeah, we'll do, two, we'll do one to twenty kind of quickly because we also have something else we're going to do. Nice to have video. Okay. Uno, dos. Uno, dos. You can repeat. Tres, cuatro. 3, 4, 5, 6, 5, 6, 7, 8, 7, 8, 9, 10, 9, 10, 11, 12, 11, 12, 13, 14, 13, 14, 15, 16, 15, 16, 17, 18, 17, 18, 19, 20, 19, 20. So we were counting by twos because that's kind of a review for most of you. Um, muy bien. Hoy vamos a practicar nuevas palabras en español. Let's do some, I need you to move him because I'm going to put, we'll move over to my rug. My rug is a little bit more in view here. I'm going to put some things on my rug. Calm down. Okay. Let me just start with this. Okay, let me just start with this. This black pyramid is for nouns. Today we are going to learn some nouns in Spanish. So I'm putting this here so that you will remember that these are all nouns. Libro. Libro. Un libro. Un libro. I'm going to move these over here to you. Lapis. Lapis. Un lapis. Un lapis. Un libro, un libro, un lápiz, un lápiz. Teléfono, teléfono. Este teléfono está muy roto. Un teléfono, un teléfono. Un libro, un libro, un lápiz, un lápiz. Borrador, 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 borrador. Un borrador, un borrador. Lápiz. Un lápiz. Un lápiz. Un libro. Un libro. Un teléfono. Un teléfono. Muy roto. It's broken. Tijera. Tijera. Muy bien. Tijera. Lapicero. Lapicero. I think in some places they might call it different words. Bolígrafo. Bolígrafo. Pluma. 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 But I call it lapicero. Lapicero. Un lápiz. Un lápiz. 
Un lapicero. Un lapicero. Un borrador. Un borrador. Un libro. Un libro. Un, un teléfono. teléfono. Tijera. Tijera. ¿Qué más? Marcador. Marcador. That's what I would call it. It might be called other things, but marcador. Limón. Um, or glue. Okay. Pegamento. 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 Dos tipos de pegamento. Dos. 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 Mm, oh, cuaderno. Cuaderno. Un cuaderno. Un cuaderno. Muy bien. These are most of the things I think you might be using for your e-learning, so you can review that video again. Don't have to worry about writing any of that down. We're just practicing. Gracias. Okay. La fecha. And we might do a Zentangle today, right? Mm -hmm. Vamos a empezar con la fecha. March 19th, 2020. Remember, March is Marzo. Marzo. March 19, 2020. This is el 19 de Marzo. El 19 de Marzo. 2020. 2020. Muy bien. 2020. Or you could say 2020. 2020. 20. Probably. Aguila, por favor. Gracias. Aguila. Señor Aguila, ayúdame a borrar. Es mi borrador. <laughs> Muy bien. Okay, let's do a Zentangle. Let's find one that we want to do today. Top one. Top yeah, I don't one. want to do top one. Thanks mm -hmm. <laughs> This looks a little difficult. So, wow, that was interesting. Okay, we're still looking at it. Paisley is pretty cool. Let's do Paisley. Paisley. Paisley, and maybe Paisley would like to do this. Okay. Yeah. Grab a marcador if you would like to do Zentangle. Something permanent, a pen, a marker, a Sharpie, something like that. Don't use a pencil or an eraser. Okay, I'll show you what this looks like before I start. This is a paisley pattern. So a paisley pattern is going to start with something that looks like a rounded, maybe oval, but has a point, maybe a teardrop shape. And we'll put a little border on it so inside that teardrop shape, I'm going to make another one following the same lines. For some reason, that looks like an avocado to me. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a flame. A, half of an avocado or a flame on a candle. Yep. At the bottom, we're going to put a semicircle. And from the semicircle, we're just going to draw any shape that seems interesting to you. All the way around it. Mine are like, kind of like, um, what is that triangle called we have in the middle insets? It's like a curvy linear triangle. That's what I was thinking of. And from that shape, we're just going to draw some more borders around them. I'm going to do that two times. It'll end up looking something like this. And from there, we're going to start from this shape. We're going to make something that goes up to the top. I'm just going to make a line all the way up to the point inside. And we'll just draw some curves off of that line this way. And some curves off of that line this way. The inside is filled in, and now we're going to start doodling towards the outside. One thing that's helpful with Zentangles is to start in the middle of your card or your paper. 
and you add shapes, add curves, add lines or shading going out in all of the directions. It doesn't matter what shape you add on the outside. They could be triangles or squares or semicircles. So I'm just starting to doodle on the outside of that shape. All I'm going to go all the way around. Okay. Well, keep doodling until you get to the edge of your paper. Sometimes it'll go. It can be relaxing, so you don't have to talk while you do this. You can either think or not think, and it's like a coloring meditation. It's a doodling meditation. That's my shape. And again, I could just keep adding lines going out towards my paper. You can do like a spiral. You can really start to do whatever you want. At this point, it's always going to look great, no matter what you do. Going out to the edges of my card or my board or my paper. For some reason now, this is starting to look like something that would be on the timeline of life to me. Some kind of um, invertebrate with a hard shell, some kind of trilobite or some kind of, does it look like a creature? You're yeah. to it now, I see what you're doing and it looks like more like maybe even like a bacteria mm -hmm. I was thinking about or some kind of plant with leaves. All right, be creative. When you do your Zentangles, take a picture and send it to me. I think it would be really cool to also make something to send out to someone maybe that you're not visiting right now, like a friend or a grandma or grandpa. But I would also like to see how they are turning out for you. And um, I do have a read aloud. You can, you can continue to do that if you want, and I will read. From Lava to Life. We learned yesterday that these tiny bacteria began to have a war and some bacteria began to go inside other bacteria and multiply, right? And we talked about the mitochondria that were in the cell. They are using oxygen to make power. And we still have mitochondria in all of our cells, all animals. They still use oxygen to make power. Okay. I can't remember if I read this one or not. I don't think so. Life mixed and morphed in the soupy, salty sea. At first, eukaryotes reproduced themselves the way bacteria do. They just split apart into two, and they kept on rolling. Then two snuggly eukaryotes paired off and fused into one entirely new being. It was the beginning of sexual reproduction. It meant that the new eukaryotes looked or behaved a little differently from either parent cell. It was not just splitting in half and having two. The new being was completely different. What complexity that innovation made possible. It boggles the mind. Those eukaryotes were a social bunch. Most discovered that it was easier to live in teams or in colonies than to live alone. About 700 million years ago, some of these teams began to look like large, thick fingerprints slowly sliding over the rocks and the sand. All of them had soft, mushy bodies. Bones or shells, jaws or teeth, all hard body parts were inventions of the future. Inside each colony of these soft-bodied creatures, every eukaryote had a special job. Some took in food. Others handled garbage patrol. Oh, how I marveled at their incredible teamwork. Still, I wondered how could life evolve from soft, gushy beings into pansies, penguins, and policemen? Some brand new colonies became the very first Animals! Wow! These eukaryote colonies ate living things. Each began as a single cell that grew to have billions of tightly connected cells. They were soft and blobby. Though some great mystery, 
or through some great mystery, most of these earthlings disappeared. But about 540 million years ago, there was an amazing change. Earth's animal population began to explode and all of life began to morph into dazzling body designs. Squishy jellyfish twitched their long stringy tentacles and developed the very first muscles. Tough trilobites led the way in making hard things like a skeleton shield. That's not all. They invented the very first eyes made out of clear crystals. Wiggly worms began to build the beginnings of brains and backbones. Guess what? They really were your ancestors. The awesome Opabinia had five mushroom-shaped eyes on top of its head and used a long clawed vacuum nozzle to snatch its prey. Everywhere, brand new animals were beginning to move, see, and think in more and more complicated ways. It was very exciting. About 500 million years ago, as ocean tides went out each day, two different groups of eukaryotes got stuck on the shore. One eukaryote group ate sunlight. The other ate soil. They found each other and they became the very first plants and fungi. Fungi, right? Fungi. Fungi? Fungi. I don't know. Fungi. Fungi. You might say they fell in love because you always find them together, trading sun energy and earth energy. Their marriage changed earth forever. Moss and giant ferns began to spread with their fungi partners underground. Some ferns grew into giant fern trees. Animals with a hard outside came out of the sea and took to the land and to the air. They became insects. Gargantuan dragonflies with wingspans as wide as seagulls zigzagged along the shore. I know we talked about this on our timeline of life. If you can remember, um, the insects, which were still invertebrates, they have no vertebrae down here, no backbone, right? But during the Carboniferous period, Carboniferous period, with all of the carbon dioxide, right, mm -hmm. in the air, everything grew giant. Somehow, a few fish turned their fins into stubby, web-like feet. And you probably remember this story as well. The lure of land was so great that their fish gills began to change into a new thing, air-breathing lungs. It took millions of years for land and water to shape these animals into an entirely new kind of animal that lived both on land and on water. But it happened, and see if you remember what kind of animal they are talking about. It lives both on land and water, and the word for this animal means two lives. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. What is it? The whole group of animals. It does start with an A. Oh, amphibians. Amphibians. <laughs> I forgot to show you that picture, but I just want to tell. I think we've done two pages. So we'll stop here for today, but here is this picture. You see amphibians and you see insects and fish all in this painting here. And I'll get ready for the meditation while you finish that. I want to say thank you to Adrielle for helping me out on all of my videos so far. She's great to work with. And I'll just say that Benjamin made me this uh, noun today, this black pyramid. It is awesome. And he's very good at crafting. So I'll say thank you to Benjamin. Maybe he'll make me a whole set. I don't know. My drawing of the pictures. And what does it look like? Bacteria? I'm a jellyfish Ooh. and fish and water and dragon. Oh, oh, I need to bring it. Oh, don't get it back. <laughs> oh, do you want to show this? Oh, sure. And here's a 
Don't mind with the light. It's a small tangle card. Paisley. All right, we are going to have our meditation today. I don't know if you have noticed that I have two different kinds of stripes going on today. So these are my vertical stripes, and these are my horizontal, horizontal. stripes. <laughs> okay. Can you just twist that over just a little bit? Mm -hmm. Do you like to meditate in the darkness or with light? I kind of like darkness, but I usually close my eyes for meditation too, so it doesn't matter that much. Actually, you can turn it off because you can hear me. Okay, here's our candle. And I will set our timer. No, that's good. I have been doing my meditations in the morning, and I have been trying to do 12 minutes, so I did that this morning. So I have to change it back. All right. We have to find a nice, comfortable place to sit. <sighs> Grab a pillow if you need to. Grab a pillow. Yeah. How does that feel? Good? Or do you like it? What do you mean by good? I feel good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel a little bit better. It's like refreshing almost, like waking up in the morning. A little yeah. refreshed, even though it wasn't a nap. All right. Well, have a nice day, everyone. Email me or comment below. Um, talk to me so I feel like I have someone, people to talk to. <laughs> and gracias. Hasta luego. Bye.